Now to a Fox News reporting exclusive as declassified information is shedding light on Iran's financial situation and its current ability to finance terror groups. Rich Edson at the State Department with the details on that. Rich. Hey, good afternoon, Connell. And State Department officials are saying that what they're seeing in the Middle East is that uh, Iranian-backed militia groups are having a difficult time. They're cash-strapped. This is according to declassified information that State Department officials have just shared with us, saying that Tehran has warned Shia militia groups to find new revenue sources. Hamas has enacted austerity plans to address less funding from Iran. Officials say intelligence shows Iran's cyber command needs more money. And reports from the region show Hezbollah deploying donation boxes to raise cash. The State Department's envoy for Iran says this shows administration sanctions against Iran are working. When people talk about Iran's regional aggression, they're talking about Iran's support for its proxies, Hamas, Hezbollah, Shia militias in Iraq and Syria, and the Houthis in Yemen. We are making it harder for all of these terrorist organizations to operate and destabilize the Middle East. A year ago, the Trump administration withdrew from the Iran nuclear agreement. That meant restoring sanctions on Iranian oil, banking, and exports. Some Democrats in European governments criticized the withdrawal from the nuclear deal, saying that it would further destabilize an already volatile region. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani has warned that his country will begin producing highly enriched uranium in less than two months if European governments fail to shield Iran from American sanctions. Citing an increased threat from Iran, the United States has expanded its presence in the region, sent uh, a carrier strike group to the area, B-52 bombers, some Patriot missiles, and also the Pentagon announcing the president has approved uh, an increase of force there by troops by about 1,500 that will be sent to the region. Connell? All right. Good reporting. Rich Edson at the State Department. Melissa? Here to react is retired Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. You know, when you hear that report, that now the terror organizations are being starved of cash and they're being told to raise money elsewhere. Doesn't that kind of tell you that, that by definition, the Iran nuclear deal funded terror and that, you know, the people that put it together have blood on their hands? Well, no, I, I would not view it that way. What, what that shows you is that those are, those are some of the things that Iran is doing to, to what it considers to take care of its own national security interest in the region. And they were doing those with or without the Iranian nuclear deal. But we have to look at the bigger picture here. We don't want to get to the point to where we say, hey, this means sanctions are, quote, working, because that means to working towards what end? If we actually push them further and further into a corner to where they start reprocessing nuclear materials and increasing the heavy water that's necessary to make you know, potentially weapons grade, that's not a win for us because then that pushes us closer to war. So we really need to look at what we're trying to outcome So you here. think that the fact that they aren't able to fund terror and kill people does not mean that sanctions are working? Well, of course no one would want that. Absolutely we don't. What I'm saying is that that's going to happen because of the way that, that Iran, right or wrong, and we'll say it's wrong, that's the way they view their security needs. And they're going to do that no matter what. We have to look but at the bigger but picture. But they're telling them to look elsewhere for money. We can't right. give you money. That means that they were right. giving them money. They that's were, a good and that thing. means that they're going to continue. So you, uh, but course, you're saying piece, they're yeah. not giving them money right now because they think that's in their strategic interest, no, not I, because no, they're cash strapped? Clearly they're crash strap. There's no yeah. question about that. What I'm saying is, is the much bigger issue for the West and for the United States is that we don't want to push them to develop nuclear weapons, which they weren't doing prior to that. That's much more important than this other part there, which is bad. I'm not saying it's not, but Why this is worse. Why do you think that they weren't developing nuclear weapons? I mean, they, the Israelis went in and they found that they had moved all of their material and all of their documents to a different location and they just changed the name on everything. Well, what we have from both the United Nations and the, our own State Department prior to pulling out of this last May was that they were in compliance. Now, there were problems with the deal, which are, you know, widely reported and many of them are accurate, but they had a deal and we had pressure and, and standing to actually make them comply in the areas where they weren't. But they were complying and it was putting a constraint. Well, now then we have the risk to take the constraints off and we see where that's leading. It's not helping us out. We'll, we'll move on, but um, they weren't compliant if they found all of those documents because they had said that they weren't doing it anymore and really they just right, changed that's... the name of the project. But let me ask you about North Korea while we're still here. Okay. Um, they're insisting that they won't return to talks until the U.S. stops what it calls, quote, a unilateral demand for total disarmament. What do you think about that one? Yeah, that's that's something that, we, that I, I've been arguing that, that we, we pushed a little too hard on that. When we seek 
complete and total denuclearization as a required entry point to, to where we ask them uh, to do everything that they that we want them to do, and only then will we start to release sanctions and stuff. That's just a non-starter because they're going to have to have something to give something. If we want denuclearization, we have to be willing to give something for that, and that's going to take a step-by-step -step approach towards peace, which is what the South Korean government advocates and what they want. So I think that we need to go more in that direction. Mm. Well, they've already always taken advantage of us in that situation in the past. But anyway, Colonel, thank you for coming on. Appreciate your All time. Right. Thanks, Melissa.